Hello and welcome to Transfusion Related Acute Lung Injury. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's talk about what happens here. 85% of transfusion related acute lung injury is associated with these antigens. So it is a antigen antibody inflammatory immune reaction that occurs in the lungs that can cause the patient to have acute lung injury. Plasma rich products are going to be more associated with this disorder than plasma poor products. So let's talk about some definitions. First of all, TRALI, T-R-A-L-I, which is the uh, transfusion related acute lung injury, is acute respiratory distress with bilateral infiltrates during or within the first six hours after transfusion. Possible TRALI is when we have the symptoms of TRALI in the presence of ARDS risk factors. So we don't necessarily have this acute lung injury, but we have the risk factors there for ARDS, which would put that patient at high risk for developing a TRALI type of response. The Berlin definition now, this is a definition of ARDS that has been uh, some of the terms have been dropped and the term now ALI, or acute lung injury, has been dropped and severity now is based upon the PO2 FiO2 ratio. And if you're not familiar with this, the PO2 FiO2 ratio is simply the PO2 divided by the FiO2. This should be greater than 300. If it's not, then that can indicate that we have acute lung injury. Incidence is about 1 in 1,300 to somewhere in 1 in 27, 270,000 transfusions. So you see it's not very common, but we want to be looking for those people at risk because that's where the incidence really goes up. We can decrease the incidence with mitigation strategies. We'll talk about those. And it remains the leading cause of transfusion-related mortality. So what happens here? Let's take a look at the bottom of the page first here. And what we can see is we have this resting lymphocyte. And then something happens to the lymphocyte to cause it to be primed. Primed means it's ready to go. It's ready to attack something. It's ready to become activated and become part of the inflammatory immune res response. So something happens. We prime this in some way. Maybe it's an autoimmune response, an autoimmune disease that the patient has. Something has primed this ahead of time. Now we get this blood in there that has the HLA and HNA antibodies. And those are the second hits that cause the activation and then the immune response in the lung. Risk factors, so critical illness, trauma, surgery, cardiac disease. So these are the, so remember again, I said we can mitigate some of this if we're looking for risk factors, and then we are being careful about how we are treating those patients. Sepsis, shock, ventilation. So these are all risk factors for ARDS, right? Inflammatory conditions. These things prime the neutrophils and then can activate the endothelium. So we get that transfusion related reaction. So here are the transfusion risk factors. So those are the risk factors that put the patient at risk for acute lung injury. Now let's talk about what makes this transfusion potentially a type of transfusion that would cause the patient to have trally. Plasma from female donors. This is because females have more activated neutrophils than do males. Therefore, since there's more of them floating around in this transfusion, there's more of them to become activated and to potentially cause this transfusion reaction. Higher antibody levels, so the patient who has higher antibody levels, larger transfusion volumes, the more blood we give, the more inflammation that occurs in the patient's body, the greater the chance that we are going to have a patient have trolley. Cellular products are also implicated in this, so not just the blood itself, but the cellular components as well. 
Prevention, so leukoreduction may help. We can look for plasma that comes from male donors or antibody screening, restrictive transfusion. So maybe we're going to wait a little while before we give that transfusion to this patient so that we can try to prevent the possibility of trally occurring. Platelet additive solutions, pathogen reduction, experimental leuk reduction filters, etc. So a lot of different things we might be able to do for prevention. The clinical presentation is going to look like ARDS, so respiratory insufficiency with hypoxemia, that's that PO2, FiO2 ratio less than 300, fluffy bilateral infiltrates, that's the picture we get on the chest x-ray of ARDS, pulmonary edema, and this happens again within the first six hours of transfusion. Another similar type of event that can occur where the patient has pulmonary edema is called TACO. That's transfusion-related circulatory overload, which is different. So we have a circulatory overload that's a cardiac condition as opposed to trally, which is an inflammatory acute lung injury condition. So the management is supportive care, fluid management, Role of steroids is unclear, so we don't know whether or not that's going to be helpful. Immunological workup to identify who may be a good donor. Some future directions may be to try to harmonize our definitions, so we're all talking about the same thing in the same way, to examine our transfusion role in trauma-induced ARDS, and develop markers to identify who are at-risk patients, therapies, targeting the mechanisms, antiplatelet, anti-complement type therapies, maybe other future directions that we can use to help to identify and prevent trally from occurring. Here is our reference if you'd like to learn more about trally. Thank you for joining me for transfusion-related acute lung injury. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, 